Okay, thank you all. At this point, we will be moving on to our second topic, our area, the humans and societal impact of AI. We're going to start with a series of short talks by Stanford faculty. So first, I'd like to introduce Juliana bideran Nure, who is my colleague in the philosophy department. She's an assistant professor of philosophy and by courtesy of political science. And she's the faculty director of the Stanford Basic Income Lab. Hello, everyone. Um, I want to spend my five minutes discussing an old policy proposal that was revived in the US uh, very recently. It's called Universal Basic Income, or UBI. And it can be traced all the way back to Thomas Paine and was picked up much later on by Milton Friedman and MLK Jr., among others. And it wasn't quite discussed over the next uh, decades. Um, and that change over the past three years or so, um, when the proposal was put forward by many personalities in the US as a potential response to the growing worry that AI and automation um, would massively displace workers from the labor market. Now, as many of you know, numerous reports warn us that AI could have a tremendous impact on employment, um, both by replacing some jobs entirely and by replacing tasks within other jobs as well, so that the overall need uh, for human labor could dramatically decrease. Now, the future of work is also likely a lot like the present of work that is precarious. Um, too many jobs are, and will likely continue to be, degrading, boring, poorly paid. Now, UBI helps with those problems by securing a floor below which no one is allowed to fall. It increases economic security for workers who stand to lose their jobs. It helps those who barely make ends meet. It offers exit options for workers with particularly bad jobs. And if it's set sufficiently high, uh, it could even help increase workers' bargaining power so that they may demand um, better working conditions. Now, we now know that almost half of Americans support a UBI for workers displaced by AI. And UBI is a very simple proposal. It's a recurring cash grant um, given to all members of a community without means test and no strings attached. So you can think of uh, $1,000 a month unconditionally. Now, there is a lot of resistance to the idea of giving people cash, no strings attached. Most people say that they would continue to work uh, when they are asked, what would you do if you were to receive a UBI? But when people are asked what others would do with their UBI, now the answer is very different. It would be a disaster. People would um, watch Netflix all day, uh, and they would take up drinking, and the economy would collapse. So now, what does the evidence say, uh, what do people actually do when they are given an unrestricted cash grant? So luckily, UBI experiments have been conducted in countries as different as Finland, Kenya, India, and Canada. And we also know a lot from a wealth of unconditional cash experiments throughout the world. What they find, spoiler alert, people don't drink more and they don't watch Netflix all day. Um, they, are, in fact, do not withdraw en masse from the labor market. And there is also ample evidence that people do not use the cash on temptation goods like alcohol and cigarettes. But there are also many areas of uncertainty. First, these findings from different places at different times will not necessarily be very good at predicting what would happen in different places in the US right now. Second, besides labor effects, there are many more interesting questions that need to be answered about what UBI could and could not achieve. So I'm thinking about the impact UBI could have on stigma, crime, health, education, gender equity, racial equity. But excitingly, um, many of us are working on a new phase of UBI experimentation in the US. And so hopefully we'll find out uh, more about UBI can do very soon. So Y Combinator Research um, has just finished a feasibility study in Auckland and is now planning to experiment uh, with a large uh, randomized control trial in two sites in the US. The city of Stockton, California, under the leadership of Mayor Michael Tubbs, has launched a city demonstration where their community is going to engage in a uh, reflection about the future of work and the meaningness of work and deservingness. 
There's a very interesting, very small um, demonstration also happening in Jackson, Mississippi, where um, the Springboard for Opportunity is going to give 16 black mothers uh, a UBI, no strings attached. And the city of Chicago is also assembling a task force to explore the possibility of a UBN pilot. And there are many more such projects bubbling up throughout the country. Now, two years ago, at the Stanford Basic Income Lab, we convinced city leaders and experimenters from throughout the country, including many of those that went on to announce experiments later on, to think together about UBI experimentation and implementation in the US. One thing that came out of this is a toolkit called Basic Income in Cities that brings together existing evidence, highlights different models of experimentation, and makes a list of concrete recommendations on how to set up a pilot for those who are ready. Um, I hope that some of you will check it out. Cities can be laboratories of change and experiment the visions that we so dearly need for our future. American cities are already experiencing some of the changes that AI uh, brings to our economy, and they are ready to find creative ways to make sure that their communities come out of these changes empowered rather than marginalized. I think that supporting local, local communities in those bold and utopian and yet evidence-based attempts to invent a future that works for all is one of the most promising uh, pathways to a human-centered economy.